Well, we're going to shift gears. So who better to talk about the defense space, the defense sector, aerospace and defense sector than our next guest, Northrop Grumman CEO and Chairman Kathy Warden, who joins me exclusively from the Reagan National Defense Forum here in Simi Valley, California. Kathy, it's so great to see you in person. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me, Morgan. It's great to be back with you. Um, so much to get to, but first I really want to start with kind of some of the news of the day, which is um, the fact that we did see another continuing resolution extension to the budget that was passed through Congress last night. It takes us into February. Um, from a defense spending outlook, how do you think about that CR and what does it mean for Northrop Grumman? It's positive to have a CR, certainly, but we are looking forward to a full appropriations bill. And we see that Congress is increasing spending proposals, and that's a positive sign. The federal budget submission was about 1.5% increase for defense, and Congress is looking at another $25 billion or so potential increase on top of that, which would bring it closer to 5%, more in line with inflation and what we think it needs to support federal government spending going forward. Yeah, and of course, Northrop Grumman has a number of big ticket, I realize also classified, but big ticket um, programs that you work on with, with the government right now, including modernization of two legs of the nuclear triad. So I do want to talk to you a little bit about that, specifically the B-21 bomber, which is super secretive, super stealthy. Uh, Air Force recently came out, said there's five, I believe, in production. Um, how are you keeping that program on track, given the fact that it is so big and so complex? Well, we started with risk reduction on that program several years before award even, and have continued to focus on ensuring that the team has the resources they need, everything from the facilities to the tooling and the processes that support a very new design type of capability for the B-21 bomber. And it has worked. We have kept that program on schedule and cost, and looking forward to moving into higher rate production later in the decade. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty amazing, the fact that it's it's remained on schedule just because historically that hasn't always been the case with major programs. So it's certainly very noteworthy. Um, you also have the replacement program for the current ICBMs, the Minuteman missiles, the ground-based strategic deterrent is the program uh, as well. It's very high tech, it's very software focused, but it's also in many ways a shovels in the ground infrastructure project. Where does that stand? That too is progressing well on cost and budget. Uh, and, and we have looked at that program as another program that required significant risk reduction even before we started into this engineering, manufacturing and design phase of the program. So a, a t risk reduction phase of about three years preceded the phase of the program that we're in now, which has been ongoing for about a year. So four years of great progress toward uh, initial operating capability for that program later this decade as well. So let's talk a little bit about hypersonic missiles as well. It's been a big focus, especially in light of the disclosures we've gotten about some of the recent tests that China has done uh, with hypersonic missiles. A lot of talk that perhaps China is ahead of the U.S. in this so-called new and emerging arms race. How do you see it? We see certainly that the threat environment has elevated over the last several years. And in response, the U.S. military has focused on the Asia Pacific Rim. And we are looking at the capabilities they need to be survivable against higher capable threat actors in every domain from space to air to cyberspace and, of course, sea and land. And so as we have worked with the government, these modernization programs, several of which you just articulated with B-21 and the ground-based strategic deterrent, are key to enabling our ability to project power and defend U.S. interests into the next century. Northrop Grumman is one of those key contractors working on hypersonic capabilities uh, for the U.S. government right now. There's successful tests that you did not that long ago uh, with Raytheon and the U.S. military. Uh, recent contract award to develop a new counter missile um, as well. How big is the opportunity? We see that opportunity as growing in significance. Right now, we are in prototyping phases where we're developing the ability to demonstrate a capability. Eventually, those programs will turn into production programs where we're producing larger quantities. And so right now, it's relatively small in the vast portfolio of Northrop Grumman, but we see it as having strong potential. 